Socrates lived between 469 and 399 BCE, and he is one of the most famous philosophers in the entire history of humankind. He is sometimes considered as the founder of Western philosophy, and his work reflects the philosophy of skepticism, which has at its main base that knowledge can be obtained through systematic doubt and continual testing. Although Socrates hasn't actually written anything, he has forever changed philosophy itself. Most of the things we know today about his philosophy came from Plato, Aristophanes, and Xenophon, whose writings are in the form of dialogues between Socrates and other Athenians. These writings gave birth to a new literary genre called the Socratic Dialogue. Unfortunately, he's also famous for his tragic life. In 399 BCE, he was accused of corrupting the youth of Athens and of failing to acknowledge the city's official gods. After a trial that lasted just a single day, he was sentenced to death. He spent his last day in prison, refusing to escape. The way his life ended can be considered as the founding myth of philosophy as a discipline. For one to really practice philosophy, they have to go against societal norms, to question everything, even at the risk of their own peril. Everything about Socrates was impressive. His appearance, personality and behaviour, as well as in his views and methods. And this made many of the people around him to write about him, including Plato. It is unfortunate that Socrates didn't write at all, and all we have is indirect evidence. Also, it's said that each age produces a Socrates of its own. However, there are some core fundamental teachings of the original Socrates that transcend the centuries. And to help you better understand his teachings and how you can implement them into your own life, in this video we bring you nine life lessons we can learn from the philosophy of Socrates. Number one, open yourself to the truth. Socrates said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. This quote is one of the most famous quotes of all time. It's also called the Socratic Paradox. It was called a paradox because such a statement of Socrates seems contrary to common sense. This quote is a reply of Socrates to the Oracle of Delphi, which stated that Socrates is the wisest, and Socrates replied to this statement by saying that he is wise because he knows nothing. He simply considered that he didn't know what the truth was. Truth is that which is in accordance with fact or reality, and Socrates was very famous for developing a mental model for seeking truth, calling it elenchos, also known as the Socratic method, consisting in analysing all the elements of an argument, to understand the hypotheses on which the argument is constructed, to see if these hypotheses are based on facts, and if they're valid. Thus, according to Socrates, we can pursue the truth by constantly asking questions to others, and digging deeper into problems and thought experiments. His teachings are extremely valuable, even today when we need so much to develop our critical thinking in how we analyse our life, or society in general. If we just eat, sleep, work and procreate, we're no better than any other animal. In Socrates' view, such a life would not be worth living. It's important to never stop learning new things, asking questions and developing ourselves, and to never assume that once you know something, it's enough. You need to always question what you know as a fact, seek evidence, and refresh your knowledge constantly. For example, imagine that you're working in an engineering department, and you're informed that you have to follow a certain design methodology, but you don't understand the reasons why. Instead of just working by following orders, 
you'd be better off applying the Socratic method. Ask your boss as many questions as possible to fully understand why this method is as it is, who proved that it is really the best and what methods that person used. If you find the explanation unsatisfactory, you might even propose a new designing method and you could increase the quality of the design overall. Don't just follow orders and pretend that you know what you're doing. Only through acknowledging that you don't know something are you in a position to ask others questions to find out more, thereby developing your knowledge and skills, and by extension, improve your career. Number two, be courageous. According to Socrates, he is a man of courage who does not run away, but remains at his post and fights against the enemy. Socrates was a contrarian and a polarizing figure. Not only through his looks and behavior, but also through his way of interrogating people around him, and because he didn't acknowledge the official gods. Due to this, in 399 BCE, he was arrested for corrupting the youth and brought to trial which lasted just a single day. In the end, he was sentenced to death. In spite of being offered the possibility to escape, he decided to remain in prison before his tragic death. He died by drinking poison hemlock. Certainly, Socrates was a man of great courage until the day he died. During his life, he was never afraid to go against the current of Athenian opinion. He was seeking the real truths behind the common beliefs. He refused to believe in the gods. He refused to be part of the political arena. No matter the cost, we need to stand up for our moral principles. For example, when your boss at work asks you to betray one of your colleagues, you should refuse it even at the risk of getting fired. When you're at a family reunion and you catch an old relative saying something racist or bigoted, you have to speak up and start a tough conversation with the people involved. Remaining silent when you have to speak up and obeying unjust orders means partnering with the abuser or with the criminal and causing harm to innocent people. Courage is not only a desirable trait we need to have, but it is the mark of any moral human being. Number three, be authentic. To quote Socrates, the greatest way to live with honor in this world is to be what we pretend to be. Socrates never shied away from proclaiming his views no matter the danger. He didn't take sides in politics. He was far more interested in seeking the truth than in political and social status. Ultimately, his stubbornness to be who he really was led him to trial and premature death. But due to the fact that he had the courage to be authentic, to question everything publicly, he lived honorably and his fame has lasted to this day. Socrates was also bold enough to proclaim his ignorance towards many subjects. He didn't hesitate to ask others questions in order to find the truth. Even in regards to physical appearance, he didn't polish himself to look more than he was. Most of us do not have the courage that Socrates had, but we can learn from him to be more straightforward more honest, to better align our ideal of ourselves with who we truly are. This means to stop seeking the approval of other people, to stop dressing and behaving to impress others in order to be seen as we would like them to see us. It is much better instead to work more in shaping our character than in lying and deceiving others in regard to who we truly are. If you're not happy about how you look, work on building muscles or losing weight instead of buying clothes to try and fake it. Stop pretending to be who you are not and use that energy to start the real work on addressing the main sources of the problems. Only then 
Can you be the true, authentic version of yourself? Number four, be humble. Socrates tells us, pride divides the men, humility joins them. It is said that Socrates had an unpleasant appearance. He was short with a big belly, with rough facial features, bulging eyes and a snub nose. He was extremely mocked due to his looks, but he didn't seem to care that much. He continued to use the same cloak every day, living a poor life, not caring either for his hygiene or for eating and drinking well. However, also because of his humble appearance, he was able to speak with people from all walks of life, whomever he was finding in the marketplace or other public areas. Male or female, young or old, slave or free, rich or poor. His humility gave him a special freedom and many possibilities to interact with different types of people. Although only a few of us would want to look like Socrates and adopt such an austere lifestyle, we can still adopt some aspects of his humility in order to be more free and to be able to experience life more fully. Humility means first of all freedom from pride and arrogance. The bigger your status in society, the more you need to practice humility. If, for example, you're a manager in a factory, you need an amount of humility to talk to employees working under you and listen to their suggestions on how to improve teamwork. If you adopt an arrogant and demanding attitude, you'll deprive yourself of a valuable input from your subordinates. If you want your staff to respect you, you have to respect them equally. They are the creators, the ones actually performing the primary functions of the business giving them unique, valuable insight you can't see from a management or executive level perspective. If your staff feel like they're truly valued and respected, they'll generally want to return that respect with delivering to their best abilities. Only when you've created such a connection will they open up to you and give valuable feedback which you can use to improve the working methods in your factory. The more humble we are, the more approachable we are, and thus, the better our connection with others, leading to more, better opportunities. Number five, beware the busyness of life. In the words of Socrates, beware the barrenness of a busy life. In the late 5th century BCE, when Socrates lived, most of the Athenian men preferred fame, wealth, honours and political power to a life of labour. They always seemed to have a busy life, but not a happy one. By contrast, Socrates neither laboured to earn a living nor participated voluntarily in affairs of state. Rather, in spite of his popularity, he chose to remain in poverty. He wasn't even interested in being considered a teacher, he believed it was more important to teach people to think by themselves than to fill their memories with new things that they may not even use. Doing things just for money or for fame was not one of his interests as he understood that living a life without a real purpose is an empty life. Following Socrates' example, we should all be careful not to have a busy and empty life, but rather a meaningful life. Nowadays, there are so many activities we can engage in, so many things to choose from. If we don't know how to limit our desires for more money, more things, more fame, we risk the possibility that we completely fill our time with activities, leaving no time to stop and process, to digest everything going on in our life, to find the meaning and make better, considered decisions going forward. Running after money and fame won't give us real meaning in our lives. All it does is cost time and energy, both of which can be better spent doing things that actually fulfill you, things you really enjoy. You don't have to try to do everything you're capable of doing in life, 
Just start by figuring out what's really meaningful to you and prioritize your activities accordingly. Life can only become meaningful when you do meaningful activities. Number six, be a citizen of the world. Socrates stated, I am not an Athenian or a Greek, but a citizen of the world. We shouldn't be defined by artificial borders like the geographical border of our country. People shouldn't be just citizens of their state. They should be citizens of the world. Now more than ever, there are many more things that unite us than separate us. Unfortunately, we humans typically think of ourselves in small groups, our block or street, our town, our county or state, our country. If the internet has taught us nothing else, it has taught us that we might have more in common with someone thousands of miles away than you do with your own neighbor. We are all human beings, no more, no less. And making judgments about a fellow human based on differences like nationality, skin color, gender, or in fact anything other than their behavior and actions is utterly nonsensical. Socrates understood this very well, even though at that time this idea was truly revolutionary. Greece was divided into many smaller states like Athens and Sparta, and there were many wars between them. But Socrates was not a fan of politics. He refused to take sides with one party or another. He was more interested in finding an objective truth than in a subjective one or in aligning himself with a certain group of people. In the same way, we should be interested more in the common moral principles which connect us than in the apparent differences between us. If you meet someone from another country, from another culture, don't focus on how different they dress from you or how they behave and think, but rather focus on the physical and psychological needs you have in common to have enough food to eat, a shelter over your head, to feel you are a part of a community, to feel secure, to take care of your family, and so on. All humans on this planet have the same basic needs, and this is the common ground from which we should engage with one another. We are all citizens of this world. Number seven, be happy with less. Socrates posits that the secret of happiness, you see, is not found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less. Happiness is, by definition, an end goal of our desires. Happiness is not a given. It requires a certain effort and the fewer desires we have, the easier it is to achieve happiness. Socrates believed that the real secret to happiness is to have a moral life, to be just. By being so, you can be more peaceful, more content with your current affairs, and desire fewer possessions. Thus, happiness is not a result of having more. It is more a result of a mindset of the ability to enjoy the small things in life. We need to work more on our inner state of mind, rather than trying to possess as many things as possible, like money, property, cars, and so on. An easy way to introduce more happiness into our life is through making small changes every day. You can start by practicing meditation, taking a short walk after lunch to the nearest park, taking part in sport, writing a diary, connecting with your friends and relatives, even something as simple as watching your favorite comedy, and so on. Over time, you can introduce more new habits, which cumulatively can increase your level of happiness. Don't expect a new apartment, a new car, or even winning the lottery to make you happy. Real happiness requires less effort than you might expect. 
It usually consists of developing small habits you can follow and build on every day. By being a moral person and focusing on practicing healthy habits every day, you can be happy with surprisingly little effort. Number 8. Don't seek vengeance. As we learn from Socrates, one should never do wrong in return, nor mistreat any man, no matter how one has been mistreated by him. For Socrates, vengeance is by definition unjust, and there is never a good motivation to justify it. This philosophy on vengeance is expressed in one of the Dialogues of Plato, where Socrates debates Polmarchus, who believes that if it is just to give each man what is owed, so too it is just to do good for a good friend and to do harm to an enemy. Socrates made Polmarchus realize that when harmed, human beings tend to become less virtuous, not more. So, while it may be cathartic to balance the scales by acting on the ancient expression, an eye for an eye, the net result is that you drive your enemies towards further immorality. Harming someone makes neither you nor them a better person. Thus, vengeance is never justified. No matter how badly someone has hurt you, you need to calmly reply and walk away. It could be your best friend who betrayed you. It could be someone who spread false rumors about you in public, your partner who cheated on you, or your boss who unfairly criticized you. No matter what, you need to calmly evaluate the situation. If appropriate, express your hurt feelings in a polite way, demand a correction or apology, and if this is not possible, pack your bags and walk away. Don't do the same thing to the other person. Don't sink down to their level. Instead, maintain your humanity, defend yourself, claim an apology, or walk away. Number 9. Have a sense of humor. In our final quote from Socrates for this video, he says, By all means, marry. If you get a good wife, you'll become happy. If you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. Socrates was well known for his sense of humor. He was often making jokes about his wife, Xanthippe, who was 30 years younger than him, explaining that she had a bad temper and a difficult personality, suggesting that he became a philosopher due to this issue and that the marriage with her is a great school in dealing with difficult situations. They even had an argument when she visited him in prison before his death. She was crying, saying that he was condemned unfairly, and he joked about it, saying, Would you think this situation was less regrettable if they'd condemned me fairly? Perhaps we can all implement a bit of Socratic humor in our own lives. No matter the situation, good or bad, making jokes can lighten up other people and us. Laughter is a powerful tool which can bring people closer, when used carefully, without malevolence or bad intentions. Laughter releases stress and makes us more resilient against the daily difficulties of life. Studies have shown a relationship is more likely to last if the partners find the same things funny. To make your relationships long-lasting, to quote the comedian Reginald D. Hunter, you have to find the funnies. Whether that's finding shows, movies, or comedians you both enjoy, or just seeing the same humor in life situations, a good joke, said without bad intentions, can light up the spirits and create truly memorable moments. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our full Philosophies for Life playlist. And for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.